Hi, welcome back to Happy Applecore Homestead. Today we are making a plum butter. I've already been out this morning and picked the plums off my tree. They're nice and soft and ready to go. So I'm just going to wash these up. I'm going to um, take the pits out of the middle and then they're all going to go into this pot and um, they're just going to cook until they get just a little bit softer and then I'm going to run them through my uh, KitchenAid attachment food mill and we'll show you what happens next. Be right back. All right, so I got all of those plums all cut up and the pits taken out and once I did that I realized that they really um, they're really very ripe and soft so I'm not going to cook them down. Um, typically you would want if they were like really nice and firm you want to put just enough water on the bottom of your pan to cover the bottom so it doesn't burn and then just cook them until they're tender but mine are already super duper soft so I'm going to go ahead and run them um, through my KitchenAid attachment. Neat, huh? All right, once I get this whole entire pot um, run through the mill and returned back to the stove, then um, we will connect then for the next step. All of the plums have been run through the food mill and this is what it looks like. And this is all of the harder parts of the plum, including the skins. And those will go to the chickens. So I'm just gonna clean out the food mill and put this right back into the pot and onto the stove it goes. All right, the plum sauce is back in the pot and it's time to add the sweetener. And I use honey um, that come from my backyard hives. And we're gonna, there's uh, five and a half cups of the sauce, the plum sauce in the pot right now, ready to go. And you're gonna use a half a cup of honey per one cup of the plum sauce. And I tasted this and it is nice and tart. You can use less honey if you want it to uh, remain more tart. Totally up to you. I recommend tasting it first so you know what you're gonna get. Um, so I need two and three quarter cup of honey to go into my sauce. I'm just gonna get the burner on now. I'm gonna be cooking it at medium. I'm gonna let it simmer until it gets thick. And while it's on the stove simmering, I'm gonna go out and pick tomatoes. I got some blight and uh, I do want to get those off the vine as soon as possible. They're starting to get nice and kind of orangish, so definitely totally acceptable to take them off. And they can ripen in the house and then I will have tomatoes for sauce. So I'm going to add this honey, two and three quarter cup and let it simmer until it's nice and thick and then I will see you for the next step. All right, and we're back. This has been about, oh, let's see. I'd say six hours of cooking on the stove top. Um, you're gonna want to make sure you stir it. Uh, you're gonna wanna, when you first put it on, you can put it on medium heat, get it up to a simmer, but you're gonna wanna keep an eye on it, um, especially until it starts to reduce down. And then you're gonna wanna just give it, um, give it a stir every once in a while so it doesn't burn on the bottom. And I don't know if you can see this, but it is a nice and thick slurry. And I tested this in the fridge, and it gets very, 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 very thick as soon as it cools down. I do not want it to cool down, though, before I put it in the canner. So my canner, I know, I know it's not a water bath, 
it's a pressure cooker. I do have a water bath canner. I don't know why I'm so attached to using this one. Actually, I need to move it around. Don't judge me for sliding. I will pick it up this time. Okay, and there we go. That's the right configuration, you know, based on how the lid goes on, whatever. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and put this into the jars. Now I'm using um, half pint wide mouth jars. They're my favorite. All right, we are getting them filled up now. Uh, it is very, very thick. And in the refrigerator, it's like, I don't know, maybe I did it too thick. We'll find out after they're done. So we're gonna fill these jars. I've got a uh, funnel here to help us stay tidy. After we fill it, we're going to use this tool here to um, go around the rim. You know, I'll just show you. Hang tight. Join me for a couple more moments. So we're gonna fill this up. We're gonna leave about a half an inch of head space, basically the ringed part of the jar. Doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to take this tool here, has a magnet on one end, tight one on the other, and we're just going to run it around. It doesn't seem like there would be any air pockets in here, but I don't want to risk it because I don't want my food to blow up. So I'm just doing what generations and generations of people have taught me to do. Alrighty, and then we're going to just take a clean, you can wet it if you want to, or dry, it, I don't think it really matters. You just want to clean the edge, this top part here, the rim. You can see, like, you don't think there's anything on there, but yo, yeah, there is. So always, always, always clean your rims. You might not think there's anything there, but there is. So please do it. You will thank yourself later when your food actually seals properly. Here's your lid. It is not going to seal well if you have food on the rim. That's why we clean that off. Really, two seconds is going to make your life so much easier. All right cleaned up, put your lid on, grab your mitt, tighten it, hand tighten, this is not a wrench job y'all. Alright, finish them up and then you put them in the water bath, we'll see you in a minute. Alright, once you get them all in and this comes to a rolling boil, this is not a rolling boil folks, this is just steam. When it gets to a rolling boil, put your lid on, it will come to it faster and then you're going to process these for 10 minutes. The plum butter is totally cooled down now, ready to come out. So I'm just going to open this up. Watch out for the steam. Always open it away from your face. And these handy dandy tools, very helpful. So we're just going to grab these out of here, pull them out, set them on the towel, and we're going to let them rest until tomorrow. And then we'll check to make sure that they have sealed properly. And then we will date them and label them and store them. Thank you for making plum butter with me. Make sure you subscribe, like, and comment. And don't forget, if you want to send me a message, you can. Would love to get to know you. All right. Bye.